Right. It was early. It was the early pandemic. I was doing speed balls every day, which is if people don't know, that's melatonin and the red monster zero. <laughs> that's what killed John Belushi. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, but yeah, it will kill an Albanian, but someone of a stronger constitution may survive. Anyway, I was you know doing that, and I was playing Hideteki Miyazaki's masterpieces and the greatest FPS ever made, Counter Strike Global Offensive. And I was like, there has to be something more constructive than this. I had gained 45 pounds. <laughs> it was incredibly fat. And I was like, why don't I would pay at this point $4,000 for Zapata oil merchandise. Yes. And there was none to be found. It's almost like it was a front company that like <laughs> never really had any employees. So there was never any, any back stock I could buy. So yeah, I, I downloaded I downloaded like the first Zapata logo I found off of Google Images and the website I used, which is yeah, it was a website that like um, you use when you want to like m- get like uniforms made for like a suburban little league or like volleyball mm. team. Uh, I think once it, like, George up Bush screen, screen print, right? I think once the Bush family finds out about these ads, they're gonna sue you guys. There's no copyright <laughs> protection on Zapata. We found out. Oh wow! Well, <laughs> that, we did look that up. We were worried about that. For some reason, they kind of lost. He kind of lost interest in the company after the Bay of Pigs, coincidentally. <laughs> yeah. Let's just after say I'd be looking forward to. Have, the, I'd be as they say I'd be looking forward to the discovery process in that uh, in that lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So where were you in Dallas? Where was your dad in Dallas? Uh, and the day Kennedy was killed, <laughs> he was in Dallas, wasn't he? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Um, uh, uh, before we, before we start, the, I just wanted to get the uh, to hear the rest of Matt's review of the new show East New York, starring Jimmy Smits and Richard Kind. Ooh. Okay, so uh, uh, Felix was talking about how uh, all the cop shows that are on now, because they're made in Hollywood by woke sickos, even though they're four Midwest reactionaries, they're four basement dads, but they're made by Hollywood sickos. So they have to do something back about the fact that they're making shows that are what they all know from their Twitter feed is copaganda. So they know they're making that. And so they have to adjust, make sense of that to themselves. They have to square that circle. So now there's a bunch of um, plot lines on shows where the war on drugs is being portrayed. Actually, that was bad. And then the cops get a chance to like fix it by being cops. And I was talking about an episode of East New York, which is about a, a, a precinct in East New York, Brooklyn. It's got Jimmy Smith as the as the captain. Got a beautiful uh, multiracial cast of uh, patrol people and detectives, uh, and they're all working together, Rainbow Coalition, to make New- East New York better. And uh, in an episode uh, that I watched, a legal weed dispensary in New York uh, in, in East New York got robbed of all the money they had in the safe, 85 grand, which just ruined the whole company. Cause you know, it was, uh, it was, they were in, in debt, so they're done for. But the guy who, uh, owned it was a guy who one of the cops investigating the robbery had put in jail for weed like 15 years ago and had been, you know, fucked by that and had to come back and like, and now I got this legal weed thing and now I'm robbed. And now it's over. And she's like, I'm feels, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did that. And, she spends the episode being like, I can't believe I did that. That's so fucked up. And then, of course, though, when she catches the bad guys at the end, she is able to make sure that he gets the 85 grand back so that his weed business can survive, uh, which is, of course, the most fantasy part of all of it, because New York City will not ever get legal weed dispensaries. I don't care that they fucking legalized it. What are you talking about, Matt? What are you talking about? On every street corner of my neighborhood, there's a shop called D- The Smoke Zone yeah. that sells. Well, I wouldn't say it sells weed. It sells it sells it sells products called like Omega Exotic Death. snacks. <laughs> yeah. Omega Death, and you know, you smoke a joint to that, you'll have a full disassociative experience. It's awesome. Also, if you listen, if, the, the moral of the story is: if you own a weed store, you got to hire the freaking Tulsa King to watch that shit. Yes, <laughs> you got to protect. <laughs> right? Yes, Martin Stars. He his 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 cash was safe. I was uh, just in. I'm sorry. I was just in New York City last week, and uh, I was staying at my hotel, and I saw the Tulsa King himself staying there. Nice, well, pretty yes. awesome, pretty awesome thing to see. Having breakfast with like three beautiful blonde women. <laughs> still got it. He still, still got, got it. Got it. All five foot uh, three of them. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start, let's start the show properly. It's Monday, March twentieth, and uh, regular show. But joining us this week is returning champion, celebrity Jeopardy, 
fucking winner par excellence, Celebrity Jeopardy champion, Ike Barinholtz. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, boys. Remember, I need, I need Ike, one, more, one more visit before I get my challenge coin, I think. Uh, you you Ike, defeated, gotta, actually, uh, another uh, uh, Chapo multiple time guest, Patton Oswald. I know. I'm not going to stop. I will not rest until all three Celebrity Jeopardy uh, participants in the finals are Chapo guests. So we got to get Heidecker in there. Yes. Um, I, I got to say, it was, like, it was like months ago when you were on Celebrity Jeopardy. I was uh, staying with Matt, you know, and we're Jep heads. So we turn yes. on TV. It's around 7 o'clock. We're rolling over ABC. Turn it on. We're like, oh, oh, shit, our boy Ike's on Celebrity Jeopardy. Not only were you on Celebrity Jeopardy, the episode that we saw you on was one of the worst massacres of the other it was two opponents. It was uh, Jalen Rose and Constance Wu. I mean, uh, respect to them, but this was Ike. I mean, like, you, you, this was like a throw in the towel moment. You got it. Like, they were like, just stop answering questions. Uh, Jalen Rose, who I've always been a huge fan of, he turns to me at the end and he goes, Complete domination. <laughs> uh, it was very fun. I, I, I'm a Jep head my whole life. Uh, I used to watch the Celebrity Jeopardy back in like the 2000s, I feel like. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was very exciting. And that first game, I got I, had, I, I got the first game was was the easiest one. After that, there was a little competition. Sh- Shang Chi gave me a little bit of a run for my money, and then Patton is like this. I, when I saw Patton's name, when they gave me the list of celebs, I just saw him. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, he's, like, the best at this shit. So, um, I think funny. there should be a different category for comedians, like Comedian Jeopardy, because comedians, <laughs> you know, uh, growing up rejected by society, unattractive. You know, you have to yes. develop a knowledge about the world and trivia, um, unlike, you know, gifted athletes or uh, actors or things of that nature. Yeah, they uh, were doing cool th- stuff. <laughs> yeah, they were getting laid. I was reading a book about Hollywood's golden age. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, though, Constance Wu, very disrespectful to Jeopardy. Very disrespectful. She was talking without buzzing in the entire episode. It's true. <laughs> I, I will just say this to all of my fellow celebs uh, who will be on Jeopardy. And this is not, not throwing shade to anyone in particular, but just don't don't blame the buzzer. It's never the buzzer's <laughs> it's fault. It's a shame. It's... Poor craftsman blames his tools. They literally have laws in place to make sure the buzzers work. Mm. Like, it's not the buzzer. So never blame the buzzer. With this, with that said, I just watched Lyle Lyle Crocodile yesterday starring Constance Wu, and it was fantastic. My kids <laughs> loved it. So there you go. Well, um, congratulations on the domination in Celebrity Jeopardy. But well, let's get into it this week. I mean, look, the thing that's on everyone's mind, uh, dom- the, the whole weekend do so like, oh, it's the... Uh, I suppose real possibility that Donald Trump will be indicted and arrested tomorrow in Manhattan, to which I got to say, you know, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. But that hasn't stopped me spending the entire weekend imagining Donald Trump in various prison related movies and television shows. Remember oh, the, Sto- would- the, the Stallone prison movie where he's like fixing a car the entire time? Yeah, lock up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think Trump would be like, a, he would be the guy uh, in. Uh, Andy Dufresne's first night in jail in Shawshank yep. that they beat to death. He was like, please, please. I think, <laughs> I'm not I can supposed see to that. be here. I'm not supposed to be here. I think, I think, I, nah, I think he would be like an Otto BC type. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> wear no, a no, tiny okay. little hat. Yeah, he's, he okay. would wear a tiny Folks, little hat. He's a, he's a very big guy. He's a very big guy, but he's got a tiny little hat. Got a tiny little hat. They call him Otto BC. Beach has yeah. been feeding me all this glass. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep eating that garbage. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the only thing I come up with a uh, Trump and Shawshank Redemption is uh, the scene where he like is in the warden's office and puts on Mozart for the entire prison, except it's the song "Memory" from Cats. <laughs> <laughs> Him standing there while they're all drinking beers, and he's just doing his little jerk off dance. <laughs> <laughs> that was the day the man of Shawshank Prison sat in the morning sun, sat sat bacon in the sun, drinking crisp diet coke all morning long. He puts on Tiny Dancer and they go, that was the day we found out that Ruth Bader Ginsburg had died. <laughs> <laughs> it was our first time hearing about it. And she was an amazing lady, no matter whether you agreed with her or not. <sighs> that, that gif of him putting both of his hands up when he's like, yeah. s- like getting serious about RBG is, is uh, very powerful. It's like when I found out today that, uh, that the Reagan 
campaign uh, conspired with uh, <laughs> Iran to hold back the hostages until after he got elected? I, this is the first tell- I'm hearing of New that. York Times, you're telling me for this for the first time. <laughs> I don't know what to believe anymore after I read that. Do we really think that's that bad anymore? Oh, no. I mean, that's here, just, yeah, like, that's okay. just being on your grind. Yeah, Jimmy Carter sucked. Though, If you were there in Iran that long, you were probably doing something bad. You know, it's like Anthony Bourdain. Everyone's like all pro Anthony Bourdain now, but it's like, you don't know what he did. You know, I guarantee, I bet that a lot of them, I, no. guys like Bill Casey in there who were, who were doing October Surprise, they weren't thinking, oh, we're preventing these hostages from being released. They thought these fucking Carter idiots are never going to get these hostages out one way or the other. So at least we get them out. Oh, yes, we give them some weapons and make some, you know, contacts for later use. <laughs> but. You know, they're out as opposed to letting Carter just dick around and like send SEAL teams to crash into the desert over and over again and yeah, fail Jimmy, to make any progress. Jimmy Carter was like he was responsible for most special forces deaths, like probably like 40 stars on the CIA's wall. And then like his other efforts were probably like he probably sent like the culture of narcissism to the Ayatollah. <laughs> You it's should like, really read this. This is a good. This is a, this is a good, good book. It's um, like what Kissinger and Nixon did with Vietnam, but not as bad. Like oh no! They yeah. Extended yeah, Vietnam. yeah, that was yeah, way that worse. Was, that was yeah. much, much worse. Because Johnson <laughs> yeah, might have yeah. gotten a deal. Because it was yeah, the same they killed deal like that they 40, ended up thousand Americans plus an extra like two hundred thousand uh, Southeast <laughs> and, Asians. Yeah, the way you know that was like actually interrupting something that would have worked is that it's the same deal on the table in sixty eight that they signed in seventy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or seventy one. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, just the just reading from the Washington Post here, uh, it says a uh, headline Trump calls for protests of what he claims is his imminent arrest. Writing from his Mar-a-Lago club in Florida, Trump surprised his advisors by posting an all caps message on his truth social platform Saturday morning that declared he will be arrested on Tuesday next week. Protest. Take our nation back. His language, along with a fundraising pitch sent out by his 2024 presidential campaign, echoed rhetoric that Trump used in advance of his attack of the attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th by his supporters. Now, I saw I saw another person that my probably my favorite commentary on uh, Trump's imminent arrest is. Someone said this is a Democratic strategist that said there's a very real chance the Proud Boys might try to seriously attempt to break him out of prison, to which I said that is probably the best reason to put him behind bars, because like a like a like a dirty dozen style mission to break Trump out of uh, prison with like Gavin McGinnis instead of uh, Lee Marvin would be. Fucking fantastic. But they all get them. like somehow locked in an IHOP the morning <laughs> of and like never get out. <laughs> and like, I, I will say one thing about this. First of all, I, uh, Trump is n- nothing will happen. He'll be fine. But uh, uh, <laughs> it is crazy that this is all about money to Stormy Daniels. It's like, yes. He fucking like that's tried the to Capone s- for tax evasion shit right there. <laughs> yeah. It is, yeah. I mean, he tried to like overturn an election. You know, he might well, have see, sold shit to the Saudis, and like this it, is like the <laughs> only reason that this might go to trial is because it is so out of his job as president. It is so <laughs> sui generis. It is so I only Trump. The Trump's the only because the, the reason that they don't put uh, presidents in jail is because they can't set the precedent of the president being liable for anything they do. Who's going to be president then? You know, so that's right, why right. They, they can't let that happen. But if they end up being like, look, you really can't do anything. Look what Trump did, because you might have to do that when you're president. But you don't have to pay a stripper in a personal check. You don't have to do that. <laughs> I will say whatever blowback he gets from this, I think it was worth it. Have you ever seen the picture of him with Stormy Daniels? Has anyone ever looked happier like, look at the picture of him and Stormy Daniels. He is, the, he is so happy. Yeah, I think it's yeah, worth he, whatever trouble he gets in. Yeah, he, like, had sex as it's depicted in Beetle Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> he chased her around the table for a while. Yeah, <laughs> While eating exactly. a giant Dagwood sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so like, that. no other guy running for president is going to do that, so it's okay. Yeah. It's yeah, maybe. Well, that'll be wild. Well, the the the, the Proud Boys, man, I'm with them. I'm gonna, we're going to break him out of jail. We we need more. We need more prison breaks in America. If anybody is going to break break Trump out of jail, it's just going to be the prison guards because they think he's cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe if he does go to jail, he could do a, a, a an escape from Danamora thing, and he can be getting an intense affair with an older woman who works at the prison <laughs> and share her with a younger man. <laughs> she, 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 he's just 
He's just looking at her like Benicio del Toro, giving her full <laughs> charisma, and she just she can't look away. But she has to be older than him, so he like r- romances like an eighty-seven-year-old woman in yeah. upstate New York. Uh, yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll the I'll warden's be, uh, ba- mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll be baking files into pies and cakes for him <laughs> coming soon. But uh, I'll be baking files so that he can get his uh, get his fingernails buffed up because they're going to look <laughs> terrible in prison. Well, I mean, Chris, I mean, that's the thing Chris brought up about, like, even like a theoretical Trump arrest is just the prospect of like any photograph of him of what like 48 hours without full hair and makeup team oh, will yeah. make him look like what he will appear as without like the full team of people spraying him up, doing his hair and shit like that. Because there was that one photo where he was at Mar-a-Lago once where he didn't have the forward quaff. He just had like normal hairstyle and not too much makeup. But even that, I can't believe, was more than 12, maybe 15 hours out of hair and makeup top. I need if, two full days of him away from his whatever yeah. he does to himself every morning. Like, I Trump, just want one photo. A couple of nights in lockup after being processed and like deloused in a prison is going to look like the like the bog witch from that uh, scary stories to tell in the dark, you know, <laughs> with the the mouth and the hair, and like just they the can make they can make whiteness. you up in prison. They can like what, what was That's that true. thing they had? What they 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 had that thing in Oz where like if you were like being initiated into a prison gang, you were basically like in drag until you killed somebody. They called it like prag. They would prag someone. Yes, out. the prag. And they like, yeah, they like made it was an internship out of, like Kool Aid and like bullshit they found. It's like I they have like, heroin uh, in there. They could make Tanner. I think it'll like it would be like uh, uh, just like Island of Doctor Moreau Brando. Like he would get just t- turn his bed sheets into like an outfit and just <laughs> yeah. and and his he would be that white because that's that's what you know. That's the terrifying oh, thing you, under Trump is knowing just how pale that flesh is like fucking yeah when you see around his eyes yeah it's so shockingly white it's like the joker he literally is nicholson's joker like you got to put the makeup on over the whiteness and he also it's yeah it's not tanning it's bronze it's bronze yeah it's not like he goes into a tanning booth or anything it's just all makeup god damn it i want to see it oh i want to see it (laughs) (laughs) we know we know we know that what even if they uh, uh uh, charge him. He will maybe get an ankle monitor. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Because they're not gonna. Ha- would you? Ha- you would have to have like a Secret Service agent in the cell with him while he was in jail. So that's just not viable. So they just give him the ankle monitor and say, "Here." It's not like he's gonna go. F- he's not gonna be able to take a run for it. Most famous man on earth. I mean, this yeah, is well, probably you guys would know this. That hell of president's host. This is the closest a president's ever come to prison. Oh probably. yeah. I mean, oh, is, yeah. there, is there no. anything even close? No. Nixon, right? they hadn't even oh. begun criminal procedures yeah. of any kind before he got that pardon. Like there was, no, there was barely anything on the on the actual like legal uh, docket uh, pointing towards charging Nixon with any specific crime uh, before they could get to that level of investigation. Ford said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, not going to happen." So I'm still, yeah, I'd say uh, it's I, never been closer. I'm still cheering for the uh, the Spanish judge who indicted Bush. That I read about. Yeah, we're going to see that page. go. That's going to happen any day now. He's going to yeah. get an urge for tapas and show up and, yeah. uh, in Madrid, and boom, they're going to drop that I'm off. here for the run into the pools. Uh, I, I think mean, the closest, honestly, might be when uh, Ulysses S. Grant was ticketed for driving his cart, horse cart too fast in Washington, D.C. when he was president. <laughs> that actually happened twice. He, I think he got a warning, and then he got a ticket. But in so, his defense, you know, he was he, absolutely shit-faced. It, yeah, abs- hammered. But sure. uh, so if if that had gone through, if there had been a breathalyzer test back then, he might have very well gone to prison. I mean, like, oh my God. So, so I mean, like, there's, you know, the question, oh, like, what, what would, how, how could a former U.S. president be in jail? You know, oh, what, what, how will this affect his run for president? You know, a lot of people are saying, you know, this is what's going to start the next civil war. This is the greatest gift anyone could ever give Trump is having him indicted in federal court <laughs> to run for president. But look, there's a way out of this. That we, I think we're all aware of, and let's just say he does get arrested. Let's say he put gets set, get, let's say he like pre-trial he gets put in a certain correctional facility in Manhattan. Let's say they give him the same kind of Secret Service protection they gave another high-profile inmate at said correctional facility, and the problem solves itself. But like, it's hard for me to imagine that this is like a way just not to deal with Trump running for president, because like I I don't know like. It, 
Like, do you, do you think that this is like a last ditch effort to just get like even by like the Republicans just to get him out of there? Like, just no, nobody wants him to run anymore. Guy. Yeah, nobody wants him to be the guy. But he can still run, Matt. Can he still run though? Yeah. Yes, that is hilarious. He can still run. Yeah, he can still like run. Eugene Debs. He could. Yes, yes Debs yes. style. Yes. And then he could. The, the only le- open legal question. I don't think it's ever been decided. But if you did it, they would. You'd have to. You'd be daring them to make you not. You know, is he could pardon himself if he got reelected? Yeah. I mean, he. I still think he could be a spoiler, like running from prison. Did you see that? Um, Ron like attacked him instead of defending him in the dorkiest. Like he, he is so fucked. Like DeSantis is. He cannot because he has to start with the Manhattan DA is a a publicity hound, and this is all baseless and irresponsible. So he has to start defending Trump because he can't accept the premise that these guys have the right to charge Trump. But then he has to be like, I don't know. I don't really know what goes on when you. when you pay a porn star to be quiet because it's like, hey, wait a minute, buddy. That's what they're accusing him of. That's what the baseless bullshit is. And you're saying it's true. How you can't do it. He cannot stick any uh, approach to Trump that doesn't undermine him with the people he needs to vote for. Which is why I am convinced there is zero percent chance he runs for president this year. I don't think he will. I, I, if he Trump seems is pretty running, dumb is the thing. It, I mean, I think he's. I think he might be. He's, I think he's not, too committed. I think. I think. I think he's too committed, and he has looked at the early polls, and he, Elizabeth Warren himself into thinking this is going to be easy. Yeah. Because you got to remember, the reason this is happening to Trump is everybody involved in any level of power is fine with getting him out of the picture. He, he's he's not helping anymore. He doesn't do the, any more job. It's like okay, you you've you've you're uh, irrelevant now. Get out of the. Get out of here. They're happy to let him go. Uh, And that means they're all saying all the time, all of the people in the uh, media and in government and lobbyist firms, they're all saying DeSantis is going to win. DeSantis is going to beat Trump. People are sick of Trump. And look at our early polls that show that. Like they're all disconnected the same way everyone was in 2016 when they didn't see Trump coming the first time. True. I still feel like though DeSantis might have done a good enough job at not of dancing around saying he's running because I haven't heard him say he's running. I don't think he's announced it. I think he's he has still not. kind of, which to me is like, I, I just feel like he might just be clever enough to realize that going on a scorched earth campaign against Trump against an incumbent is not like the smartest thing. He's going to be branded a loser. Why not sit this one out? Let Trump go against like, I don't fucking know, Nikki Haley or something. And then in 2028, swoop in and be like, I'm I think he might be uh, waiting to see what happens with this fucking indictment shit. Like maybe yeah. Trump gets spooked and resign and doesn't run again. Like maybe Trump blinks because <sighs> they, you know, that's the hope. And this is really the lever to make it happen because you yeah. got to believe that he is not thrilled about the idea of going in front of a fucking jury. Mm. Um, well, Trump is already out um, clapping back at, um, at sicko Ron by saying that, like, hey, maybe one day when you're unfairly accused by a woman and then in parentheses or a man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's back with that gay. He's on that gay Ron shit. He just needs to come out. He needs to stop with Ron to sanctimonious. Call him just gay Ron. Calling gay, him Ron. Gay, gay, Ron. Call him gay Ron. Gay Ron. You for sure <laughs> are making it to the finals if you call him gay Ron. That's just <laughs> got to say, though, Ron. that's that Trump thing is equally. It's not great either. Honestly, it's better than DeSantis's, but it's not great because he's saying they're fake accusations. Why would you give him that? Well, because you know? he does yeah. like it, like just True. any accusation is false. Like any <laughs> accusation ever made by like anyone. I guess that is honestly how he feels. Yeah. It's like yeah. accusations are things that you did. And a, a false accusation is when someone points it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's like it's like the uh, the people who are like uh, talking about Trump. Like he's like I saw someone compare him to Nelson Mandela. And they're like, hey, this is the moment where he becomes America's Nelson Mandela. And with that, I was wondering, like, you know, Nelson Mandela was in prison for 27 <laughs> years before he got out and, like, united the, the uh, I think they, met, they met Nelson months, I think. <laughs> but uh, uh, By the way, that picture of DeSantis and the kid and the students is, uh, yeah. is really fucked up. We had a teacher at our school who uh, loved to go out drinking with the students. You guys won't believe what happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> he became governor <laughs> yes it was bruce rauner <laughs> okay I, joking i um yeah can you answer a question that's been part of like it, it's a part of an executive investigation series i've been doing it's yes. sort of my own steel dossier oh do you think ron de sanctimonious has listened to brand new 
possibly while partying with high school or with high schoolers in 2005. I mean, what, he's what the right age. Yeah, he's the right age. Yeah. The right time. Uh, yeah, I think I would like to be the Nelly Orr of this d- 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 dossier and say, yeah. Yeah. I, no, by the way, I have the only time I've ever, the only thing I know about Nelly Orr, uh, Felix, is that you mentioned her uh, 5,000 times on this podcast. <laughs> well, I, she was beautiful like, Nelly Orr. I, so like, um, she was constantly mentioned by Trump in like his oh, third year of president uh, of his presidency because he was talking about Bruce Orr. Because this is during the like late period Trump, where he was only talking about like the five thousandth most powerful uh, FBI agent, like the, <laughs> yeah, like, the random guy. bureaucrats. Yeah, just like people that no one's ever heard of. And then he would he would talk about Bruce Orr, who like I forgot about. But then he would go, oh, and his oh so beautiful wife Nellie, and he was like calling her ugly. And you look her up, and it's just like a seven year old woman. Yeah, she's like she's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Can you imagine it's like being a normal with that? grandmother? Uh, yeah, it's like it's you're a loser because your wife's old. Yeah, they're both like seventy-one. Assistant director Skinner has wasted far too much taxpayer money on his X Files. <laughs> Holy uh, shit! I got. Like, there's actually. Uh, I got. I got some details about the. It's like about the payoff to Stormy Daniels from the uh, the New York Times. And kind of like you're you're so right, Ike. This is like. This is a Trump scandal from like 2016. You know, like this is yeah. we are Michael well Avenatti. Past that. This is Michael Avenatti was on. This. Yeah, he's now in jail. He's yeah. now he's in, jail. in jail. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Trump uh, called for, the governor of Georgia and was like, "You better find these votes for me, or you're going to be in a lot of trouble." And we're still like, "Oh yeah, he fucked a porn star and gave her like ten grand." Well, I mean, shit. Like uh, Trump was trying, Trump was trying to give her money. Michael Avenatti was just stealing it from her. So yeah, that is true. Yeah. He is out of all the people we've discussed right now. Avenatti is the worst. I think we could all agree. Michael <laughs> Michael Avenatti uh, was like he was like a stage mom. He wasn't like really a lawyer at any point. He was like um, making Maloli and party down. <laughs> <laughs> He uh, uh, he was a a dark horse candidate. People talked about for running for president in twenty twenty. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. Um, he also he had his own catchphrase, Basta. Remember he would say Basta. Yep, yeah, he'd be like yeah. hashtag Basta on his Twitter. Oh my god, holy! Now shit. he's in fucking jail. <laughs> he's in jail. That's wild. Uh, well, this is from the uh, the New York Times. Uh, inside the payoff to a porn star that could lead to Trump's indictment. Uh, he's got some great uh, uh, just Trump details about what a you know what, what a sort of a Casanova he is. Uh, it says here at the time it was all more tawdry than momentous. A reality star invited a porn actress half his age to a hotel room after a round in a celebrity golf tournament. She arrived in a spangly gold dress and strappy heels. He promised to put her on television, and then she says they slept together. The Manhattan District Attorney Alvin, uh, Alvin L. Bragg has signaled he is preparing to seek felony charges against Mr. Trump. Mr. Bragg is expected to accuse him of concealing a $130,000 hush money payment that Michael D. Cohen, Mr. Trump's lawyer and fixer, made to Ms. Daniels on the eve of the 2016 presidential election. Going on, it says, as they chatted that night in Mr. Trump's penthouse at Hara's Lake Tahoe, she has said she wore black silk pajamas and slippers. He told her that she could be on The Apprentice, an NBC reality show. She doubted he could make it happen. Yeah, he for the record, he, she's she completely could. fucking right. There's no way even he could not have made her a contestant on Celebrity Apprentice. The NBC would have been like, no. Sorry, Donald. Anyways, I'm sorry I interrupted. Uh, there's one, one last detail I show. Afterward, he would phone her occasionally from a block number, calling her Honey Bunch. They saw each other at least twice more in 2007 at a launch party for the short-lived Trump vodka at, at the Beverly Hills Hotel, where they watched Shark Week. <laughs> but they did not sleep oh, together I remember the again. Shark Week. Thing. Yeah, they did not sleep together again. Uh, so, yeah, just... Just hanging out watching Shark Week. I mean, like, yeah, I, uh, like one we've time said it before, but laid... I think Trump is asexual. I think, like, oh, I think absolutely, he, I think he, absolutely. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. He paid for sex with her. I think he paid her to tell people they had sex together. I think yeah. that yeah. is what the money is for. He has had sex like the contractually minimum number of times to be a straight I think, man. I think he. I don't know. I think he does get horny, and I think what he calls sex is not what. We all who have had sex <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, would say yeah. sex. He like, I <laughs> imagine, I don't base. know. I could see him like, like, or just like wrapping his, like pushing his dick onto like a woman's leg while she pretends to be asleep and just like, like <laughs> riding it like a flagpole until like 
like a, some substance forms around the outside of his penis. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not it's like what we. Yeah, it's the way it's the way that like a neutered dog will still like hump things out of instinct. <laughs> yeah, the big thing I have a hard time with is him impregnating his wives. Although you look at those kids and you know they're his. So yeah. well, uh, well, I wonder if like uh, they're getting that shit out of him like with a silly straw and while he sleeps. I don't know. I mean, Av- Ivanka, Ivana's uh, looks the ones he had with Ivana look like him. The one with the, but Melania looks like she fucked Dirk Nowitzki. Well, like, she- Baron is like nine <laughs> feet tall. And, like, I mean, it's, it's an open secret uh, that Melania has had a long term affair with the head of security at uh, Trump Tower Ooh. in Manhattan. Uh, and that like what there was that period for like the first six months of the Trump administration where she was still in New York. She hadn't moved down to the White House yet. And she was basically just banging that guy the whole time. Oh, oh wait, Matthew Calamari. Very hot. Uh, no, I don't think Cal- it was Calamari. <laughs> Matthew Calamari. <laughs> How are you? Well, you could write this shit. The game uh, show host, president's uh, chief of security, uh, Matthew for- Calamari. I forgot his name was Matthew Calamari. That's unbelievable. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Well, was it Keith Schiller? That's it. Keith yeah, Schiller. yeah, that makes sense. Well, Melania so also has like the strongest genes out of any of his yeah, okay. wives. Where's she from? Slovenia. So the Slovenia. Balkans. That's where. That's where all the fucking best NBA players come from now. Luka yeah. Doncic. I mean, yeah, like it's uh, true. Uh, they can hoop over there. And Baron looks like he would be a killer on the court. He's like seven yeah. one. It's wild. <laughs> he's a seven one gamer. He's he's destined for the NBA. Yeah, if you could take away a lot of the sensory problems of basketball. <laughs> if they could damp the balls when they bounce, so it's not quite yeah. so loud. And and the sne- the sh- the sneakers they squeak too much. But yeah, that's that's a that's a hell of a uh, of a Yugo there. He's got the Yugo genes, like John Doncic and Jochich, all these fucking guys. Oh yeah, Luca baby. Well, moving on from uh, uh, Trump and his potential uh, legal difficulties, uh, I, have a, I have a great article here uh, from New York Magazine uh, titled, Who is Still Inside the Metaverse? I oh, a while God, back, I read that about one. The, who, the metaverse. who is it? This article I'm, is I'm in it right incredible. now, by the way, just so you know, I'm doing this whole <laughs> I mean, podcast inside the metaverse. Yeah, we haven't left. Yeah, we record every ep- every episode in the metaverse. You guys don't know that we're around a big table. Uh, it's it's in a pool, and we're all floating in it. Although you can't tell because we don't have legs anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a. Um it's basically the metaverse is 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 more meta than any of us could have ever imagined. Um, the article begins. It says here, um, in September, my family and I moved from our home in Dublin to a fancy East Coast college town where I'll be teaching for the semester. I grew up in Dublin, which means I have a wide circle of friends to draw on whenever I'm whenever I'm let out of the house. The street is where I live. Well, the street where I live is friendly. If I want to borrow a spatula or I need someone to look after my cat, I only have to ask. Borrow a spatula? Come on, how do you not have a spatula? Have a spatula? You borrow a cup of sugar or something, like it's something you run out of. So it says, life is different for us in the U.S. We have for a time, the first time, a basement, but we have no friends. It seems as if none of the permanent faculty can afford to live in the suburb where the university has placed us. We technically have neighbors, but we never see them. They manifest only in the form of their gardeners who are at work every day with their leaf blowers. It's in this strange scenario, alone on a continent, cut off from everyone I know, that I decide to try the metaverse for the first time. A whole galaxy of pals brought into your living room. I think, why not? I'm busy contemplating my legless torso when I hear laughter in the room. Lifting my MetaQuest headset, I see my son has come into my office unbeknownst to me and evidently finds my appearance amusing. What are you doing? I'm in virtual reality, I say. You look like that leopard in India that got its head stuck in a pot, he said. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, here, here's where we get to do it, like what's actually going on in the metaverse. While some people have experienced harassment in Horizon Worlds, the major problem is kids. Under 13s aren't supposed to use the headset, but the app is overrun with children occupying their parents' avatars, meaning that conversations are constantly interrupted by one, a parent adults asking you in high pitched voices if you like to poop, and two, there are like, pol- <laughs> polls to decide oh if the poop God. person should be removed. There are uh, like 48 people in the metaverse. If you let your kid get groomed in the metaverse, you're the worst parent ever. <laughs> well, you you know, already I know they parent- say, like, don't blame the parent, but, like, if you let that happen, like... There are 48 steps to even get on the metaverse. How did you let that happen? Wait, hold on, fucking Felix. This guy was literally just said 
he was in the metaverse and his kid came in the room and it's like, what are you doing? And he's like, uh, like if your kid comes in the room, take off the fucking headset and be like, you guys want to go play catch? Like, what yeah. are we doing? Terrible maybe, parenting. Well, maybe, maybe he like looked at the kid with the, you know, what it VR heads up display, whatever. And it like, it did a 23 in me and it, he saw that it didn't carry any of his genes. <laughs> I mean, I, hopefully his dad, readout. who is an academic, has uh, conveyed to his son the importance of articles and the foundational nature of articles to American culture, and that dad is doing this for an article, and he should understand that, because this is very I, important. I will say, the, I love reading articles in the metaverse. Like, <laughs> sometimes, I'll, like, on a Sunday morning, I'll, like, my family will be in the house. And I'll go into my office and I'll jump online to the metaverse and I'll read on the New York Times on my couch in the metaverse. I honestly, I, 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 I go straight for virtual arts and leisure. <laughs> my my dream job is a town crier in the metaverse, where I just read articles aloud to people. But but I don't think this guy is saying, "Oh my God, there's kids in the metaverse." Like, no, no, get roomed. He's saying it's pathetic. He, it's it's lame that these are the only people no, no, in the like, metaverse. No. Yeah, he's like Mr. The, Wilson. The kids, the, you know what? You know what it really was? It reminded the me more than anything. It reminded me more than anything of the time uh, Will and I watched Felix play Fortnite, and everybody who was shooting at him sounded like they had a fucking uh, a sucker in. They were like goo goo ga gaing, and we were like, "These are the people that you're head scoping all day, Felix. These literal children." Yeah, they have better reflexes. <laughs> it's more it's more impressive to kill children than like adults. If you kill a 35 year old, like you suck. <laughs> he goes on the metaverse. He wants to talk to other adults and a local neighborhood boy also in the metaverse takes a slingshot and <laughs> breaks his window and he <laughs> it's ruining his his hang in the metaverse. He's like met Mr. Wilson. He's very upset. A man okay, he goes on a, a man with the username Nutsack Sandwich. Uh, floated over his head. I, I goes, a lot of sweet looking ladies here tonight, he says, as a woman, or at least an avatar of a woman, goes by in a crop top. I ask how long he's been using the quest and what activities he'd recommend. He thinks about it. There's ping pong, he says, and there's porn. Porn? Yeah, virtual porn. You tried it? I haven't. Yeah, that's some good stuff, Impala expert says. People always hating on Zuck, Impala expert says. That doesn't mean they're wrong, I say. I don't know, man. I'm just here to have a good time and maybe pick up some MILFs. Pick them up, I repeat, but what will you do with them? Oh, I'll do, Impala Expert says mysteriously. <laughs> so, oh, my God. To be God. clear here, he's talking yeah, about picking up MILFs, be... meta-MILFs. And his name is Impala what? <laughs> Impala Expert. Is you're in the metaverse and the best thing you can come up with is Impala Expert? <laughs> you can fucking do anything you want. You could be like Air Force pilot. And he's like, Impala Expert. Oh, just- well, keep, I keep in mind that this is probably a 14-year-old <laughs> who's here. Who's, I'm in the, I, I, I came here to chew bubble gum and pick up MILFs, meta MILFs, and I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> I bet, but this also now, it makes me think that that's not even how a real 14-year-old boy talks. It makes me think that that was a man pretending to be a boy talking to another man. It's like a reverse <laughs> grooming thing. It's all those perverted justice people. Um, Wait, is there really is there porn in the metaverse? Uh, apparently, oh, yeah. according to this guy. <laughs> okay, so all right, so I, I'm ta- I'm not even joking here. Is this how it works? I, I'm wondering. Let's say the five of us were in the metaverse. We were hanging out in my backyard in the metaverse, and I was like, uh. Will you guys excuse me for a minute? I have to go to the bathroom. And I, in the metaverse, I disappear while you guys are still hanging out. And then do I like go into like my house and then jet, like look at porn and jack off and really jack off and then just come down and join you guys? Is it like a group hang and I just disappear? Like, are we in this, are we in the same house while I'm masturbating? I guess is my question. (laughs) I don't know. Well, the thing is, I don't know if there's like porn, porn. I don't know if you can like thrust into each other or anything. Mm. But I know that you can get together and like talk sexual style. And I think maybe you can go off onto other things that are not on the metaverse because that's just the Facebook thing, but like are in the VR world, which is not quite the same thing because so there's VR porn that you can interact with. But I don't think you can technically get it from the metaverse because, you know, he's trying to do a, a family friendly thing. I don't know. But you can, in the metaverse, be like, hey, guys, we're all going to masturbate to the same thing at the same oh, time yeah. right now. <laughs> yes. But I guess yeah. we could do that without the metaverse. We could yeah, do that. Yeah, we could do that on right this call right now. All right. Okay, we'll, we'll figure this out. <laughs> right. um, it's not just pornography, though. Uh, apparently, comedy 
is big in the metaverse. Yes. And at the soap and at the Soapstone Club is one of Horizon World's most popular destinations. That's where I meet Oki Driver, who's a producer at the club, meaning he helps out with events and explains to newcomers how the place works. Meta is reportedly striving for almost div- Disney levels of safety for its users, and the comedy here, he tells me, is resolutely family-friendly. Think about a 6 p.m. slot on regular TV, he says. Turning to a billboard, he runs through the upcoming acts, saying encouraging things about each one. Mork and Mindy, I recommend that very highly. You'll laugh till you cry. And like, I think that's just a user with the name Mork and Mindy who's performing virtual comedy at the... Oh, Central I thought Club. it was like, you're going to watch an episode watching, of Mork and Mindy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, a second billboard unusually depicts photos of real-life comedians. I find myself slightly awed by this, as if I had forgotten temporarily that I, too, am a human, not a cartoon. Dry Bar at the Soapstone reads the billboard featuring Drew Lynch, Alex Valudo, Daphneek Springs, nationally recognized comedians performing as avatars in VR. We're expecting a big crowd for that one, Oki Driver says. These are nationally recognized comedians. He lowers his voice. We may see Mark Zuckerberg in attendance. Uh Uh-huh. He came before, sat in the audience. He mutes himself, doesn't speak. I was working here that night. Zuckerberg's username, according to Oki Driver, is the human Zuck. I don't point out to Oki Driver that I've also seen an avatar for Kim Jong-un in the club. And during Zuckerberg's public appearances in virtual reality, his username was either Mark or Zuck. Kim Jong Un at the club. I'm glad that it's a dry bar. I would hate. <laughs> do you think that somebody lost their 33 years of sobriety in the metaverse? Well, Felix, listen to this next. Listen to the next thing in this article. Later, I asked someone named Space Angel Seven what she would recommend to do in the metaverse, and she tells me she really enjoyed sitting in on AA meetings. Are you an alcoholic? No. Did they mind you being there? When they found out, they were pretty angry. Yeah. (laughs) 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 It's rough. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity, though, to plug an appearance I'm making next week at a comedy club (laughs) in the metaverse called Dry Stone. (laughs) Soapstone. 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 Yeah. Uh, Jim Brewer's opening for me. I'm very excited. <laughs> Jim Brewer, that yeah, would solve avatar. the mask problem if you just did yeah. metaverse comedy. Well, that's the thing. We wanted to be both sides represented. And I'm always wearing I'm wearing a mask right now. So, <laughs> Well, yeah. That that's, sucks. Yeah. Everything you just said sucks. Really. Yeah, yeah it's, it's awful. It's pretty cool. It sounds cool. terrible. It's and cool. it's like, this is an article. In, this was in the New York Times. It was just written by... Clark Fluckerberg, like what the fuck? Like it's such a like <laughs> this place is great. It's so oh my god. I mean, to be fair, I think the I think the article made it did, did seem like some sort of dystopian nightmare. But I mean, like the, oh, okay, the, well, I mean, like that sounded the, great the, to me the way you were the, saying. The, 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 the twenty users, like um, um, Milf Banger four twenty and uh, Impala Expert. I mean, they seem to be enjoying the metaverse. But yeah, as as for the rest of us, I'm, I'm not sure. We'll we'll see if they get legs. But, no, they, um, they added legs to the metaverse. That was, no, remember, that was a big thing. I think that was a joke. They didn't get legs. It was, <laughs> that a, was a joke? Thing. Yeah. Like somebody that, like, wouldn't it be joke. funny if they said, we got legs now? And it turns out they don't have legs yet. Oh my it's God. very difficult to get the legs. I'm just laughing so hard at that joke. Holy shit. <laughs> well, it's, well, look, it, it's not all bad news. I mean, the metaverse may suck, but there are, I, I, I just found out today about a very, exciting investment opportunity for you know for for men like us here in the reality verse uh this comes courtesy of rolling stone a pro-trump social network wants to corner the anti-vax jizz market yes that's right fighting to survive in the crowded ecosystem of far-right social media companies the pro-trump platform getter has in recent weeks highlighted high-level deliberations on the oddest of business pivots remaking the site to add an online clearinghouse for human sperm But not just any sperm. The proposal would see the company expanded to include the marketplace for semen from men who haven't taken any of the vaccines against COVID-19. So, boys, gentlemen, you may start your engines. This is great news for me. I froze all of my sperm from 2014 to 2019. (laughs) And my wife last week said, you got to get rid of it by Thursday or I'm throwing it out. (laughs) 
uh, uh, three sources familiar with the matter and a fourth briefed on the situation describe serious repeated discussions about creating the online anti vaccine market in which unvaccinated men would self-advertise and sell sperm to the highest bidder. Two of the sources say stakeholders have gone so far as to explore possible testing requirements to ensure specimens came from unvaccinated donors. I mean, that, would, that was my real question in this because, you know, Unfortunately, yes, I have gotten the COVID vaccines, making rendering my sperm virtually useless. Worthless. 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 Yeah. But like, I, how, like I, I assume that you you can test if someone's been vaccinated or not. But like, I, I seem to like, what are the, what are the what are the control standards here? Like, what are the what are the the loss prevention uh, for the the sperm market here? Mm. The taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got they got an exquisite taster in there. Yeah. Moderna, Moderna, they, I don't know what they put in Moderna, but it's definitely the same artificial sweetener they use in Coke Zero. <laughs> the Johnson and Johnson opens beautifully uh, and it has great legs <laughs> and it's a perfect company. Company it's B for duck, even. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, it says here, some staff have also expressed skepticism internally about the feasibility of the plan. Uh, f- fire those weak-hearted souls. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Will, you said this, what was, it takes. this was on truth? This was on truth? Getter. No, this is on better. On getter. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a, I'm so sorry. This getter, is like get your sperm here. Get your sperm here. Hot, unvaccinated That's sperm. <laughs> and this is oh an ad that... You 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 that uh, pops up to you while you're on Getter, or is this like Getter's new thing where it's like if you're on well, Getter, they're, they're, yeah, no, like look, is this not like none of these like sort of like pro freedom uh, social media networks have like really panned out, you know, uh, Gab, Truth Social, Rumble, all of them, they're they're they're, they're struggling to find purchase, and like this is. Getter has it been like, look, the, the social, the right wing Twitter thing isn't working out for us. Let's just become eBay for jizz. Let's just let's just become the come the come house, come town. They're becoming come town. Well, if you if you combine like you know pure blood unvaccinated sperm with like an egg from one of those women who have a vaccine injury that makes them shake a lot, you would make like a damn peer, like someone a day walker, <laughs> someone with all the powers of a vampire or a vaccinated, but none of the weaknesses. God. <laughs> Those oh, shaking man. videos are amazing, by the way. Joe <laughs> Manny took one and he put it to some great hip hop song. I can't remember. <laughs> but um, it apparently says uh, uh, they, they express skepticism about the feasibility of the plan, noting restrictions of semen sales in other countries and other and, and other hurdles. All four sources. Oh yeah, you don't want to deal with those pesky <laughs> Canadian jizz laws. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a there's a value added tax for it in Mexico. That was one of the that was one of the things that uh, AMLO put up for referendum. <laughs> I mean, there's uh, if they ever do make this happen, there will be people that will order that that will get in the mail like a like envelope that just has like loose jizz in it. Like it'll be <laughs> yeah. like pink sauce, but for yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> white sauce. White sauce. This was this was a big thing that like right wing people were, were talking about in twenty twenty one for like three weeks about how like the blood and semen of unvaccinated men will be in high demand in the coming years. And it just it thinking about that made me remember how like remember how we like vaccinated like we we laminated our vaccine cards. <laughs> like <laughs> this is just this just doesn't affect anything now like this just has nothing to do with it. these are the only people still talking about it the people who want to set up the facebook marketplace for cum <laughs> well it's because I it's mean, so Felix, fun though they get to well, be like, in like some sort of deadly bo- contest of wills with their evil government like they get to they're still fighting they're like they have they're resisting in a way that feels meaningful to them why would they give yeah. that up it is like, also you know, true you guys have really hit on something. Sorry, Will. You guys have said that, like, if in 2023 you're like, I am a conservative, you're a weirdo. You are fucking weird and strange, and you're obsessed with cum and fucking bottom surgery. You're just a very strange person. I think that's a very good point. And I tell it to strangers on the street, and they all say, leave me alone. Well, we also we also Bethany Mandel over the weekend. Uh, <laughs> Bethany, people coming up, like, like look, it's like, for, for, forget about her like uh, uh, having her brain freeze on television when asked about the things she supposedly wrote a book about. But like 
the the record of her tweets over the last five years, whether it's about like how her 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 feral children at home are like eating soap and uh, scrubbing her hair with a toilet brush. By the way, her hair still looks like shit. But um, and and then like all the Instacart shoppers she's gotten fired or whatever. Like the, yeah, these are these are not normal people. They they are out. They are well out of the mainstream of, of for Joe and Jane America. I gotta say, I'm I not on Twitter as much as I have been the last couple of years. And so when like a friend of mine will send me an article, it's always interesting to see what sticks and who sticks. Do I remember this person from 2017? I don't. This woman, I remember. I was like, I remember her, and I remember her. Like, oh my God, it was like the the week that they were like, hey, you have to wear a mask if you go to a store. And she was like, furious you had to wear a mask. And she showed a picture of the inside oh of her mask. God. She was like, this was my oh mask my after God. three hours. Yeah. And it looked, like, it looked like Rudy Giuliani's underwear. Like, it was like dark <laughs> yellow yeah. and like yeah. brown yeah. and also red. It was fucking so gross. Ugh, yuck. Ugh. Yeah, she has like, she has like, um, like if you if you touch her, you start taking like poison damage. You get a status <laughs> effect. <laughs> She's so fucking gross. I'm sorry. Like it just she always she always looks like she got static shocked by something and is coming down from it. She just is a repulsive person. I, 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 I there's just deeply deep like her and Seth are both just creatures of the swamp. Horrible. If you write a fucking book about something, you have to have a canned well, answer I mean, ready to go. Well, yeah. I'm sorry, but like she was doomed from having that. She was doomed from the beginning because you should think to yourself, I'm going to write about a, a book about woke. That should mean the same thing as if I'm going to write a book about melancholy. Like it doesn't mean anything. It's just this feeling. You have to have a much more specific fucking uh, key I mean, on like, this to start writing. And then I'm going to talk about wokeness. Oh, good luck. Well, well, Matt, like, I mean, they, 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 they've they come up with, like, you know, what they, what they say are, like, more of, like, textbook definitions of woke as some sort of, like, discreetly new phenomenon. And, you know, like, we've talked about on the show before, like, it's definitely a thing that exists. But the problem for them is they can't seem to come up with a definition that is different in any market way from just liberalism since the New Deal. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, this right. is what they've yes, been saying, exactly. like, for the last 100 years about, like, oh, wokeness is when um, society, society attempts to correct for past, uh, past wrongs by legislation. The Civil Rights and, Act uh, is yeah, woke. Exactly, yeah. Uh, it's so true, though. The reason they can't do that is because what they would recognize is, yeah, this is just liberalism. Why am I calling it wokeness? Why is this, why is this different? It's because everything's worse. And everybody who <laughs> has these liberal values is hysterical about it. Because everyone is hysterical about everything because things have gotten markedly worse to live in America in the last 20 years. And they can't accept that premise. So they have to just uh, make up ways that like people have changed. They've gotten worse somehow because they watched too much MTV or something. I hope this really does put a dent in like the conversation just because like as annoying as like someone who's like overly performatively woke is they pale in comparison to the person who's complaining about it. And I yeah. just did a fucking press tour for history of the world. And like every person was like, so you can't say anything anymore in comedy. Can you? Everyone's so goddamn woke. And I'm like, well, I, I, yeah, no, I, I just don't, I'm, I will talk about anything other than this. It's so fucking boring. You know what I mean? And hopefully now people will kind of see stuff like that and be like, well, oh, it is kind of dumb. Well, Ike, since you brought it up, I mean, I've been dying to ask you history of the world. What was it like to work with the great Mel Gibson on this? Uh, I have been a fan of his ever since uh, I saw Gallipoli. Um, and I don't love his movies as much as I love his politics and just his general vibe. Well, I mean, um, I, I, I watched a little of the show, and I got to say, you really like to bring a sort of a comic dimension to your character, man responsible for all the wars in world history. I thought you did a fantastic <laughs> job with that. You really like you brought happiness to that merchant. He was the merchant character you played was so happy. <laughs> well, I, I like I like the I like the I like the other guy you played, the uh, the Polish swimming pool architect. <laughs> that guy was good too. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean the guy I played the guy who founded the first movie studio. Um, uh, oh, our sketch, the invention of usury, I thought was uh, a really fun one. Uh, that was a good one. Jim Casaville is hilarious in that. I thought. Um, <laughs> It was, yeah, it was, uh, it's a dream. He's a great guy, and uh, yeah, he's just like his character in Lethal Weapon. 
Like he's constantly like you ask him a question, he just puts a gun in his mouth. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but sure, like, uh, did you, like, was Mel Brooks like as influential on your like childhood sense of comedy growing up as it was on on mine? Like, were you, were you a Mel head? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I got in a little trouble recently because I said uh, before Mel Brooks movies weren't funny, and like <laughs> they they kind of like like they were fun movies. Like I like the Marx Brothers, like and like I don't know. There's a couple of Billy Wilder things in there, but like Blazing Saddles was the first movie where it was like, oh yeah, people are like laughing so hard they can't breathe. And so my dad actually saw Blazing Saddles opening night, and and he was a huge Mel Brooks fan. So Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein. Uh, big movies in my household. And then when I saw History of the World, I watched that movie, I think, a hundred times. I loved it so much. I also, like, very obsessed with history. By the way, shout, can I just shout out a little podcast called Hell on Earth, which I, which I just finished last night? Yo. Holy <laughs> shit. Unbelievable, boys. Chris, Matt, mwah, chef's kiss. Anyways, uh, so I loved History of the World. I loved how there were these little vignettes and it was all over the map. Uh, so, yeah, he's a very, very, very big uh, influence in my life. I, I watched History of the World a lot when I was a kid because it was one of the first movies I saw with tits in it. And, yes. You know, like, but I gotta say, but like, he was also uh, like the first guy, like he was one of the first guys in comedy that was like, oh, yeah, dick, farts, tits, <laughs> like the stuff that like regular people think about and think is are, are funny and not just yeah. like, oh, now this guy's wearing a dress. <laughs> like it's you know it's a little bit yeah funnier. I'm sorry him and him and Red Fox are basically responsible for like yeah things that are funny in a conventional sense hundred I mean, percent I yeah. throw Richard Pryor in there too we're just really descended from Red Fox but like those yeah. were the first guys who were like in like 1969 starting to be like okay let's do let's do a, a whole number about titties and yeah I, I like that that is such a movie head like a way to piss off movie heads though. This could be like, oh, like nothing was funny like before like the mid sixties because they'll they'll show you some bullshit movie from like nineteen thirty seven or some yeah like some it's two hours and forty three minutes long, dude. And literally, it's about someone, a, a woman recovering like lost silverware. <laughs> someone literally said to me, got mad at me because he's like, what about it's a mad, 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 mad world. <laughs> Which I love that movie. I love that movie. I saw it at the Cinerama Dome, the fiftieth anniversary, but. Aside from like the Jonathan Winter scene, there's nothing that's explicitly hilarious. Whereas Blazing Saddles, also Blazing Saddles is like the greatest story for a comedy ever. A black sheriff goes to a white frontier town. It's like so funny. Uh, so yeah, Mel was just like the original and he's still funny. Like he's actually still like at 96. Like we had a little premiere in Hollywood and they showed a little video that Mel made, you know, thanking everyone. And then it comes up and Mel, the screen comes up and Mel's there. And he's like, I, I want you to know I took a car ride here and I was listening to the radio and I'm looking at you all and you need to know that we're going to have scattered showers for the next two days and there's a low pressure <laughs> system coming in from Canada. And I was just like, oh my God, at 96, I mean, I'll have been dead, for, been dead for 20 years at that point, but if I was alive, I would not be as funny as that. Beautiful well, man. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it there for today's episode. I want to thank uh, Ike Barinholtz for coming on. History of the World Part 2 out now on Hulu.